All right, guys, so this video is gonna be a breakdown of how you would solve or how I would solve one of these typical amount of substance calculation questions. So let's jump straight into this. Get yourself a nice piece of paper from your notebook or something like that. Get yourself a calculator and have a go at this question, okay? If you're confused, you don't know what to do, it's your first time going into this, you're in year 12 or something like that, no worries, I got you sorted, all right? So let's read through this together. We got Sophie, she really wants to make some stinky sulfur dioxide gas. So it does the following reaction. Okay, so he's a bit of a weird one. No judgment though, guys, all right? We've got this reaction scheme going out, right? Calcium sulfide, we've got 2.5 grams of that, is heated with 9.85 grams of calcium sulfate, and the reaction is carried out to completion. Show that the calcium sulfate is the limiting reagent in this reaction, okay? Really easy stuff. Let's get my pen and let's break this down, okay? So the first thing you wanna to think to yourself in all these calculation questions is, I'm gonna to have to use one of my equations, right? One of my mole equations. There's two that you need to remember, okay? So we've got the first one being N equals, and the second one being N equals. N just being the symbol for moles, you should know this, guys. What are these gonna be? Can you remember? N equals CV, this is for concentration volume, this is solutions primarily, and then we've got N equals M over MR. Okay, so when you're dealing with any of these calculation questions, as soon as you get in the exam, chuck these bad boys in the page, or if you're very confident, don't worry about putting them on the page, but just have that mental model in your head of, okay, I'm gonna have to use one of these equations. Step one is gonna be start with the moles. Okay, that is always step one. So let's do that right here. What do we have? Do we have the concentration? No, we don't. Do we have the volume? No, we don't. Do we have the mass? Yes, we do. Okay. Can we calculate the MR? Because we haven't been given it. Yes, we can, with the help of our friend, the periodic table. Okay, so we've got calcium sulfide, and we've got calcium sulfate. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add each of the constituent elements up from the periodic table to work out our MRs, okay? So if we do that right here, we'll say MR, of our calcium sulfide equals, and we're gonna have the MR of our calcium sulfate equals, all right? So calcium has 40.1 right there, and sulfur, if we go over, has 32.1, okay, 32.1. Calcium sulfate, again, same thing, 40.1 plus 32.1, but this time we've got four oxygens, 16 times four, Done, all right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put that in your calculator, or you can just do it in your head right here. So if you do it in your head, that's gonna be 73, sorry, 72.2 right there. Let's do this one in the calculator. So we've got our 72.2 plus four times 16. Again, you could have done this in your head, but let's just make sure we got it right, 136.2, 136.2. All right, so we have our MR, right? Boom, done. We have our mass. So now what we can do is we can work out the moles. I'm gonna do that right now, and then you're gonna see why you wanna work out the moles, all right? So then from there, the moles of the calcium sulfide equals M over MR, right? So we've got our mass is 2.5 divided by the MR that we just calculated, 72.2, all right? I'm gonna do exactly the same thing for the calcium sulfate. Whoops, let's put a moles, calcium sulfate equals, we've got a mass of 9.85 divided by the MR, which is 136.2. All right, let's move this over and we're gonna do these calculations in the calculator again. All right, so let's do this. All right, we've got 2.5 and that is over uh, 72.2, boom. That gives us an answer of 0 0.034626. Okay, and what is that? Moles. All right, cool, let's do this next one. Uh, let's just clear this. 9.85, and that would be over 136.2, boom. Let us see this, 0 0.07232. Mole. All right, cool, we are done, we've got the moles. 
Now, that would be step one. What is step two going to be? All right, let's do this in a different color. Step two. Step two is we want to look at the ratios that are occurring in the equation, aka the mole coefficients. Good old mole coefficients right here, okay? So these numbers basically tell you, if you're not aware, you may already know this, it just tells you the ratio in which these compounds or atoms, whatever's reacting together, are reacted and then produced together. And that ratio is fixed within this equation, okay? So here we have a one to three ratio for the reactants, and that carries over to the products. We have a four to four ratio for these products right here. And these are the ratios that we're gonna be using to calculate which one is limiting. And how are we going to do that? Okay, so I'm going to put here step two is mole ratios, right? If the moles that actually reacted in our experiment, our calculated moles, is not in this same ratio, it's less than, then that is the one that is limiting. Okay, so what we can say then is that three moles of this is required to react with one mole of this. Okay. So if we look at this right here, our calcium sulfide is this, right? If we times this by three and it is not, it doesn't match this, then this would be the limiting one. Okay. So let's do that. Let's do, uh, let's do uh, 0 0.03. We already know that it's not, it's not going to match up in my head just by looking at it, but let's actually do it out. 0 0.034626 times three equals... So let's do that in the calculator, 0 0.034626 times 3 equals 0 0.1038. 7 something, 7, 8 I think it was. Yeah, 7, 8, cool. Now, because this number is greater than this number, it means that the calcium sulfate is limiting, okay? This one should be three to at least three times this, okay, for it not to be limiting. Hopefully that makes sense. So it's it's an easy calculation, guys. Step one is calculate the moles. You're going to be given some sort of variables. In this situation, you're given the mass. Sometimes it's going to be concentration. Sometimes it's the volume. Sometimes it's something else, right? Step two is you look at the mole ratios of the things that you're concerned with. It's going to be the reactants, okay? It's going to be the reactant size when you're dealing with limiting because the limiting thing that is influencing this equation is going to be the reactants. The products don't matter, okay? And then you just look at the ratio and you say, okay, does this match the ratio that we ex see existing in the equation itself? If not, that one is limiting, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So then we would say for our answer, um, three mole, let's write this out properly. Three mole calcium sulfate required uh, to react with one mole calcium sulfide. Moles calcium sulfate is not three times moles calcium sulfide, therefore is limiting. Boom, three marks, okay? You don't have to put this exact terminology or this exact wording, just sort of try and explain what this maths is telling you, what the mole ratios are telling you, and you will get the marks, all right? So that's our first three marks here. Now what we have to do is calculate the mass of the sulfur dioxide that Sophie actually produced, right? What do you think we're gonna do here, okay? If step one is the moles, and step two is mole ratios. This this applies to basically every single calculation question regarding amount of substance. It's just depending on how complicated the question gets, there may be a step three or a step four. Okay. But for this, we're gonna just use exactly the same steps. And we're gonna we've already done step one, basically. We've worked at the moles in this question, all right? But we are now looking at the products rather than the reactants, okay? So what we have to do is we just have to use the mole ratios and sort of back engineer this question, right? So we look at the mole ratios. Remember I said that it carries across the whole equation. So this one to three mole ratio for the calcium sulfide and calcium sulfate also applies to the product side. So we can use one of the moles that we created here and we can look 
and transfer it according to the ratios that are in the equation to work out the moles of the product that are produced, if that makes sense. However, okay, you have to use the moles of the limiting reagent, okay, because that limits the amount of product that is produced, all right? So if we were to use the moles of calcium sulfide as the moles and then carry out the ratio in a one to four, that wouldn't get you the mark because you're using the reagent that's technically in excess, okay? That is the other terminology, excess. We want to be using the limiting reactant or the limiting reagent, okay? So let's write this out again. We've got the moles of our limiting calcium sulfate equals this guy right here, 0 0.07232, done. Now what we're gonna do is you wanna times it by a fraction or divide it down to one and then multiply it back out to match the ratio, okay? So what you can do is you can divide it by three, okay, because we've got three moles right here to get it back to one and then times it by four again to get it back up to uh, according to this ratio or you can do a shortcut and just multiply it by a fraction okay that fraction would be four over three because you're dividing it by three and then times in it by four exactly the same thing as times four over three so that's what i'm going to do in my answer here just to give us a little bit of a shortcut let's see what the calculator is saying okay 0 0.07 Two, three, two, multiplied by four over three. And that gives us an answer of 0 0.096426. Okay, now, is this gonna be our final answer? No, that is the mole. So we have to actually work out the mass. How are we gonna work out the mass here? We're gonna just rearrange our expression for moles right here to make mass the subject. If you get comfortable with mole ratios, calculating the moles and then rearranging one of these two equations right here to calculate whatever other variable we're making the subject, in this case, the mass, you're gonna be all good for amount of substance, right? So if N equals M over MR, we're gonna rearrange this, right? And we're gonna times both sides by MR to get rid of it on this side of the equation, right? So mass equals N times MR, easy maths, guys. Okay, so what we can do there is we can say, oh, we're actually missing this guy, aren't we? So we don't know what the MR is of the sulfur dioxide. So let's just use our equation, not equation, periodic table, 32.1 plus two times 16. Okay, let's do that down here. So the MR of sulfur dioxide. So we have the sulfur at 32.1 plus two lots of the oxygen is 16. 16 times two is 32. Don't need the calculator there. So 32.132 32 is gonna be 64.1, and this is grams per mole. That is the unit of our MR or AR, right? Now what we can do is we can just chuck these two guys together in an equation in our calculator and work out what the mass is, okay? So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the moles, which is 0 0.096. 426 multiplied by 64.1. And that gives us an answer of 6.1809. 6.1809, okay? Now, what you're gonna have to do is match the lowest number of significant figures that the data given to you in the question. In each case, we've got three because we're only given two variables here. So I'm gonna give my final answer to three sig figs. So that would be 6.1809. 1.8 grams done. Okay, that's two marks right there. Not too bad. All right, so remember this method. Do yourself some practice questions online, physics and maths tutor, AQA, Edexcel, OCL, pass papers, whatever your exam board is, and have a go at these sort of questions. Remember these steps, guys. Moles, what are they? Mole ratios, what's going on in our equation, and solve from there. Okay, get good with rearranging, and you'll be all good to go. Best of luck with your exams, guys. Peace.